but NS sufferers say they can't wait and need cannabis now. In the meantime, organisations like the British Medical Association are treading a very careful line over the use of cannabis. At its recent annual conference, the BMA rejected the legalisation of cannabis, both as a crude therapeutic product and for recreational use. Their Scottish spokesman claims that only a small number of MS patients with a limited range of symptoms use the drug. We recognise that you know, patients, particularly with multiple sclerosis, do derive benefit particularly for the relief of pain and relief of muscle spasm through using cannabis. You know, we've recognised this, we've acknowledged this, and, and we certainly wouldn't you know, criticise patients for, 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 for using such drugs, and we would certainly hope that if they come to the attention of the courts, that the courts would be sympathetic towards them. That does not mean that we would support the widespread use of a drug you know, where we cannot guarantee its quality, where we know there are other drugs that may be of benefit to, to, to patients, and indeed there are other treatments that are not drug-related at all. The MS Society in Scotland is awaiting the results of a trial which is looking at the benefits cannabis may have. Our position really is, is, is that there are, there are two things that are important for any treatment. The first is that a treatment is shown scientifically to be effective and the other aspect of it of course is that it's shown scientifically to be safe. And that's why the society has been instrumental in making sure that at the moment in Britain there's a, a big trial going on of, of cannabis for medicinal purposes and we are waiting the outcome of that trial to, to give us some answers about safety and effectiveness. Biz leaves the Balfour Hospital in Kirkwall after her suicide attempt. During her course of treatment here she's been flown to Aberdeen to be assessed by a psychiatrist. She's also been the recipient of messages of goodwill from people like the independent MSP, Margot MacDonald. I didn't want to come home, because I had to convince myself that I, I definitely wasn't going to be in this world after taking all the paracetamols. I didn't do it properly the first time, so if I do decide to do it again, I'm going to have to find a, a different way of doing it. Plus, I must make a living will to say that I mustn't be resuscitated. The, the, the idea hasn't gone out of my head uh, not to do it again. I, I probably will end up um, doing it again. The psychiatrist was ever so nice. He did say that it was very understandable what I had done. And it was enough for, a, a, I was going to say, a normal person, but a, a well person would have got upset with, with all the fighting that I've had to do. And uh, not to even imagine that I was insane, because I'm not. In the aftermath of her trauma, leading figures have expressed divergent opinions about cannabis. Grampian's former Chief Constable Ian Oliver wrote recently that sympathy and emotional responses aren't good grounds for deciding what should be a medicine. But retired High Court Judge Lord Prosser says it should be legalised and supplied in the same way as alcohol and tobacco. Cannabis expert Neil Montgomery has sympathy with that view. People talk about um, self-medication and herbal remedies and they talk about it quite lightly as if um, this is something no more than perhaps a, a throat pastel that you might get in a chemist. When in fact, for people like Biz Ivo, cannabis is the only thing that's giving them a quality of life. In the past couple of years, I must have had at least a dozen calls or more coming from people who are at the end of their tether. They're ready to commit suicide because of the severe pain that they're in or the extreme discomfort that they find from spasticity problems or bladder function problems. And they really are having an impossible time. Now, many of these people are linked into families that have you know, a strong feeling of morality and, uh, and, and abiding by the law, yet they have all supported their relatives in pursuing cannabis. There must be thousands and thousands of people in the UK who are using it therapeutically and needing it therapeutically. Leslie Gibson's husband, Mark, believes the government's stance has to change. All the scientific reports state that cannabis takes away the spasms and the pain. You can't say that and then deny those people the use of cannabis as a medicine. You know, you treat an animal better than that. 
cannabis should be available from the pharmacy and it's going to be available from the pharmacy in the next six, seven months. Um, people should be allowed to use cannabis in the meantime until that is available at the pharmacy. If the available prescription medication from GW Pharmaceuticals finds that it doesn't suit people who have got multiple sclerosis, they may find that smoking it or eating cannabis helps them more than the prescribed um, other option. No matter the merits and demerits of cannabis as a medicinal drug or arguments about its legalisation, there's no doubt that Biz Ival has moved the debate on, even though she's reluctant to admit it herself. But her friends may not be able to deflect Biz from what she plans in the future. It's three weeks since her suicide attempt. She's feeling poorly and believes that paracetamol has damaged her liver. All I want to do is just to go to bed and go to sleep and never wake up again. I am tired out. I really am. I am fed up with fighting. The cannabis thing has taken over my life for the last few years. And I've now there are an awful lot of people sticking their heads over the parapet and admitting to using it for medicinal use. They can carry on fighting. I've had enough.